welcome everybody. Uh, my name is Jeff DeCorpo uh, with eFabulous, and this uh, webinar is getting started with the Open MPW and Chip Ignite uh, programs. Um, our speaker today is Mohammed Shalan, and he's going to cover uh, a range of topics, you know, from how to get started to you know, kind of completing integrating your design as well as uh, submitting uh, on the eFabulous platform. So the webinar is uh, scheduled to go for 90 minutes and is being recorded. Uh, everyone who's registered will get a link to the video after the session's over. And uh, we're going to be taking questions through the Q&A facility uh, on Zoom. So you should see a Q&A button uh, on the uh, you know, kind of lower portion of your screen. Um, you can type your questions there. We'll be covering those um, through the webinar you know, via text or as well as uh, live at the end of the session. Um, there will be additional webinars coming up, so stay tuned for that. Um, we're going to be covering some advanced topics beyond kind of getting started, including things like time enclosure, power routing, and other others as well. So with that, I will turn things over to Mohammed. Uh, thank you, Jeff. Hello, everyone. Uh, so uh, as Jeff mentioned, uh, the topic of the webinar today eventually has to do with the, getting you started with uh, creating designs and submitting uh, uh, like tape outs uh, to either the Open MBW or, uh, uh, or Chip Ignite uh, shuttle programs. So just to set uh, the expectation for today, uh, I'm gonna, today I'm going to focus only on the digital part. So uh, I'm going to uh, focus on how to use uh, uh, Carver Chip, uh, and eventually I'm going to explain what's Carver Chip and what can, can uh, does it do for you, and how can you use it to implement your uh, your design. Uh, and and eventually this is only focused on uh, digital design. So I'm gonna get in touch with anything analog uh, today. Uh, 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 like going forward with other webinars, uh, the schedule basically uh, like maybe like in two two weeks from uh, like from today and going forward, basically we'll we'll get in touch with other topics including analog and advanced thing, advanced topics as uh, Jack mentioned related to uh, verifications especially like timing verification ones uh, and so on uh, so also we're gonna basically uh, 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 like today we're gonna basically like learn what does it take basically to have successful uh, 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 submission to either uh, the open MPW or chip ignite uh, uh, shuttle programs and uh, so let's start. So, uh, as I mentioned, uh, eventually the focus today will be basically on Carvel. And Carvel, uh, eventually, as like some of you might know, especially if you are Spanish or Portuguese or with basically from, from Europe, eventually this is basically like 15th, 16th, and 17th century uh, chip. It was very famous, uh, used by Portuguese eventually to explore uh, like the, uh, the African coast. And Eventually, this is not basically what we meant here. So, Carver for us eventually is a carrier chip. If like Carver chip basically was this carrier for some cargo, uh, uh, eventually the Carver chip for us is basically as the carrier of your design that you're going to submit to either uh, Open MBW or Chip Ignite uh, shuttles. Uh, so we started this uh, basically with the uh, One Sky One Theory Open BDK. Uh, basically, it was open and released uh, as an open source BDK, uh, for, and eventually we created this uh, chip, eventually to make it easy for anyone uh, uh, using open source tools uh, to create designs, whether these designs uh, uh, eventually are open source or closed source, because eventually, as I'm going to mention shortly. We have like two programs, each one of them eventually uh, targets uh, like uh, uh, basically uh, uh, open source uh, pro, uh, designs and uh, closed source designs as well. This eventually the open MPW program uh, basically targets open source designs and then should ignite uh, for a close, uh, a close source. And if, if you want, you can do it also open source, it's up to you. Uh, so the carver chip eventually provides all the needed inf uh, uh, infrastructure. So if you are a chip designer, you know that it's not about uh, creating a design, uh, for example, to do uh, machine learning acceleration or uh, a system on a chip, where basically you have uh, maybe RISC-5 uh, plus some peripherals and memory, et cetera. And this is typically what we do when we do FPGA designs, really don't care about uh, uh, like anything else in the chip, because eventually uh, you, like you, are, you 
you are, like I was not concerned with basically designing them because they are designed available for you to use. So you have uh, like uh, uh, IO pads, you have maybe uh, PLLs, DLLs, maybe some IPs, some memories that you can use out of the box. Here, when you do ASIC, eventually, uh, and you can basically design a chip, eventually you need to build everything from the ground up. So you have a piece of silicon, which is blank, and eventually you need basically to add all necessary functionality or functionalities eventually to have a successful uh, 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 functional chip. So eventually this is like quite an effort and to make it easier for anyone and to make it basically the entry point very low. So we don't need really to understand and know everything in order like to do a design. So you design basically uh, kinda, you basically you design uh, uh, using Carville chip basically uh, almost the same way uh, the same way, basically, when you do designs for uh, FPGAs, in the sense that you, you really don't need to worry about all other functionalities that typically we refer to them basically as housekeeping functions that eventually are necessary and they have to be there in order to have the chip up and running. Uh, so the carved chip, as you can see, this is the actual, basically, actual layout uh, on the silicon. Uh, so, uh, 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 so eventually it provides the, uh, uh, what we refer to as the pad frame, where basically the IO pads that uh, enables your design to communicate with the outside world. Uh, so basically when you install this chip on the board, uh, eventually you can communicate with the preference on the boards uh, using these, uh, through these IO pads. Eventually when this, uh, this is not the chip, this is the, uh, the actual the die when it's packaged. Eventually, these IO pads uh, eventually will be connected, basically connect to the uh, to the pens of uh, of the package, and the pens of the package eventually will be connected to the uh, components on the board when you source on the boards. Uh, so this is already provided, and eventually this is uh, 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 like like uh, like uh, designing uh, like like uh, like a good successful uh, pad frame actually is not an easy job, and actually re requires lots of exp like experience. In order to basically like uh, like to create it uh, successfully. Uh, uh, also, we have basically uh, 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 like other than the uh, the the path frame. Eventually, we have two parts. Uh, one one of them eventually is the blank part, where basically I'm, I'm labeling it here as the user project. This is around uh, ten square millimeter, which is available for your design. It's uh, it's uh, approximately like like. 2.9 by 3.5 millimeter square. And then we have, uh, and eventually it's empty blank here because eventually this is the uh, basically the area where your design eventually will be placed, okay, or, or implemented. And then at the bottom, we have what we refer to as the management area. And the management area eventually, as I'm gonna discuss shortly, uh, uh, basically uh, uh, contains some, uh, 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 basically, some of the housekeeping functionalities that I mentioned that are necessary for the uh, chip to be up and running, like locking, resetting. Uh, 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 also, it contains uh, uh, a small uh, uh, SOC uh, built around one of the uh, RISC V uh, CPU cores. And eventually, uh, this uh, system mode chip is capable of executing firmware, which eventually uh, enables uh, 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 some of the services to the user's project. So through basically uh, 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 some, uh, uh, some facilities already implemented into management area that we're gonna discuss uh, shortly, eventually your, use the, your, your, your project in the user's area eventually can make use of these. Uh, and not only that, it can eventually uh, 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 control how this service eventually will be used or consumed by the user's projects through some firmware running on the system or chip. So eventually, this uh, uh, carver chip eventually is the uh, is the chip which basically we, we, you have to use whether you are targeting Open MBW or uh, Chip Ignite uh, shuttle programs. So before we start, uh, uh, let me give you like like uh, like brief overview about the two programs. What's Open MBW? Because uh, eventually, uh, like I already mentioned that, and I'm going to refer to it later, and also Chip Ignite. So uh, eventually, these are uh, uh, these are basically shuttles run by uh, eFabless. Uh, the first one, which is Open MPW, uh, uh, it's run by eFabless, but sponsored by Google. And and eventually, because Google eventually uh, has an initiative uh, 
uh, basically to sponsor fully open source design capabilities for chips. And to do this, eventually uh, they release like open source PDK and they basically support the development of open source CDA tools. Uh, uh, and uh, eventually they provide free fabrications through uh, like six shuttles, at least for uh, 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 Sky 130. Uh, uh, um, and for each shuttle, eventually we have 40 slots. And uh, so that basically you do your design uh, utilizing the carburetor chip, uh, and then you submit your design. And eventually, if it's uh, if basically if your design is successful, it can basically be picked by Google to be part of the, the shot, basically one of the shuttle uh, design uh, designs, and they have basically for the slots to compete for. Uh, uh, eventually, the the catch here your design has to be fully open source. Okay, uh, so eventually you cannot have basically anything which is closed source. Uh, basically, in, in your step out. Uh, Chip Ignite, on the other hand, it's 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 program uh, shuttle program which is run by Efabless, uh, but at basically at very low cost, uh, and eventually uh, 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 so that you can make use of this shuttle uh, if you basically if you uh, if you want, for example, like use uh, 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 get basically use different packaging. So with the Chip Ignite, eventually we have like more packaging uh, options. So we have only the WC uh, CSP package for uh, the open MPW, but for Chip Ignite, we have as basically QFN as well, uh, as basically also if you if, if basically if you need just bare dies, you can you can get that as well. Uh, your project doesn't need to be open source. Uh, eventually, uh, it can be closed source as, uh, uh, as well, and because actually it's paid, so your slot is guaranteed, which is different than the uh, Google's uh, sponsored uh, Open MBW, uh, because eventually it's like uh, 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 it's it's basically it's kind of like 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 uh, 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 like competition based, where basically you submit your design, and if your design is selected, eventually it will go into the uh, the shuttle, the Open MBW shuttle. In both, eventually you are gonna get uh, the basically uh, 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 number, basically like parts, and these parts eventually uh, were packaged and uh, also basically uh, uh, installed, basically on evaluation uh, for so that you can basically you can uh, uh, you can you can out of the box you can you can start run uh, codes eventually to uh, to validate your design or eventually or do whatever based on the design basically to, to validate it through this uh, career mode. So back to Carvel. So if we look basically at the architecture of Carvel, uh, which basically is shown to the left of the layout of the Carvel chip. So eventually uh, everything inside the uh, red box eventually belongs to the uh, uh, management area and uh, the, 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 the blue box eventually uh, this is the user's projects. And for sure, the, like in this block diagram, this is not to scale because eventually most of the chip, as you can see, actually is occupied by the user project. However, like as the user project as a block eventually is a, like a, is a small compared to the uh, management area. So in the management area, as you can see, we have uh, eventually we have memories, we have CPU, uh, uh, we have uh, peripherals because eventually we have like complete SOC. We have uh, some basically housekeeping functions. So we have like clocking, uh, like uh, we have clocking subsystem. Uh, we have power and reset. Uh, uh, we have uh, eventually block to basically to isolate uh, the uh, 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 basically uh, the, the user's project wrapper from the management area. Uh, so that basically if something goes wrong, eventually uh, uh, the management area basically can kind of still up and running. Uh, so it's not, it's not basically affected by anything that goes wrong in the user's area. Uh, we have eventually uh, 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 some uh, basically uh, uh, hardware that basically can be used to configure the, uh, 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 the IO pads uh, uh, basically on the pad frame. Because eventually, like configuring them requires driving like large number of signals, which eventually uh, we want to to, uh, to abstract and make it easier. So we have eventually uh, some uh, facilities, basically, to make it uh, easier, as I'm, I'm going to discuss uh, uh, shortly. So as you can see, it's mainly as uh, SOC with memories. Uh, plus, basically, some housekeeping functions to provide clocking, resetting, uh, 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 isolation uh, slash protection, as well as uh, 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 IOPAT configuration. 
So starting with the management as you see, the management as you see, uh, we uh, uh, like like right now it's uh, basically uh, uh, like if you are doing design, the nearest uh, basically shuttle is the Open MBW five. So in the previous shuttle, uh, Open MBW shuttles, the first four eventually. Uh, 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 we used uh, 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 risk 5 based SOC, uh, which is the case also for uh, Open MBW5. Uh, with, uh, initially, we, we used the Pico RV32 uh, uh, as, as a CPU for the SOC. Uh, starting with OPW4, we switched to uh, VIX RISC, which eventually like more powerful uh, uh, CPU uh, compared to Pico RV. Uh, uh, and uh, and this is basically the case for Open MBW5. So the curve chip used for Open MBW5 eventually has the uh, uh, basically the same uh, SOC with the same CPU. Which, by the way, basically are using the minimum uh, configuration of VIX risk with the bugging facility in, uh, enabled and small uh, instruction cache to basically to enable the bugging. Uh, also, we have like three kilobytes of RAM. These are provided as three kilobytes of open RAM. This is eventually it's an, uh, these are two uh, macros generated by the open RAM uh, uh, open source memory compiler. And also, we have one kilobyte of the FF RAM, which is another compiler which uses uh, uh, sender cells, uh, basically to, uh, to basically to uh, to generate. Uh, 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 RAM uh, macros uh, compared basically to the uh, to the SRAM cells, which which are smaller, that used basically by the Open RAM uh, compiler. Uh, the SOC is scheduled of executed directly from external uh, Quad SPIs, and we have a Quad SPI flash controller uh, 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 on board. And uh, and eventually, uh, uh, so inside inside the SOC we have this flash controller. And eventually, when you get the board, eventually the board contains the the, the quad SPI flash, which connected uh, uh, to the curvelet chip. Uh, and eventually, that's basically uh, to uh, and and the firmware that 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 the management SOC runs eventually is stored inside this uh, quad SPI flash. Uh, the, the SOC contains peripherals, and these peripherals include SPI master controller. We have UART, we have uh, two uh, timers counters, uh, we have a single uh, uh, GPIO pin, and we have a logic analyzer. And the logic analyzer eventually is basically has like 128 probes that enables uh, uh, the management SOC basically to uh, uh, to probe uh, some internal signals in the user's project, uh, as well as driving some signals as well. So uh, we can use it to to observe and to control uh, signals inside the uh, management SOC. And this will be clear when I discuss an example a project that we did and offer basically uh, avail for you basically to examine and and, and customize. Uh, another component in the uh, in the management area is the housekeeping SPI, and actually uh, this SPI is different than the uh, the SPI master controller. Uh, uh, eventually, uh, 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 this housekeeping SPI is is like slave SPI uh, that can be that you can communi uh, you, you communicate with it using external uh, SPI master uh, master controller, for example. If you are using one of the FTDI chip that contains uh, SPI uh, master controllers, eventually you can connect it to the housekeeping SPI and you can talk to the housekeeping SPI. And housekeeping SPI uh, eventually provides a backdoor uh, needed to uh, basically to observe and control uh, uh, the uh, 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 the carvel chip. So uh, eventually, when you bring it up and then basically you see something. Uh, basically unusual uh, uh, and you want to do some debugging or testing eventually you can use housekeeping eventually to do to do this and in, in addition to that eventually the housekeeping SPI provides uh, eventually means to read the user's project ID configure uh, uh, basically some of the housekeeping uh, components such as the DLL so that you can set the, the eventually the uh, multiplication factor basically for the clock multiplier. Uh, for example, you can you can use the housekeeping to reset the CPU. Uh, uh, also, and which actually it's a very uh, neat feature. Uh, you can use the housekeeping SPI to program the uh, the on uh, PCB uh, quad SPI flash memory uh, uh, connected to the uh, to the management SOC. So that through the housekeeping SPI, eventually you can. 
in something called a uh, uh, pass through mode eventually you can uh, talk directly to the uh, to the flash and program the flash uh, so that you don't need to program the flash basically or to use ex basically some external programming hardware and you can do this directly from the house uh, keeping spi ports uh, as i mentioned basically we have clocking resetting uh, uh, we have the management protects and uh, the the gpio configuration so uh, for the users area uh, which basically occupies most of the chip uh, uh, and as I mentioned, this is basically like uh, uh, it's almost uh, 10 square millimeter. Uh, uh, eventually, uh, we have some uh, uh, services that can be used by uh, the use by the uh, by the uh, users area. So the user area is 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 empty. You can put your designs uh, in that area, but you have some services that you, that your design uh, might uh, want to consume. Uh, uh, first of all, you have uh, 38 user I/O pads, and these user I/O pads uh, can, you can configure uh, uh, basically either uh, through basically the uh, 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 firmware running on the management SOC. So you can have an, a, a small program running on the management SOC to configure the uh, uh, the I/O pads, so that eventually when the chip basically is out of reset, uh, this uh, firmware eventually configures the I/O pads, so the I/O pads basically. Uh, 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 are configured and ready to be used by your design basically uh, immediately uh, after reset. And when I say eventually uh, uh, configuring the IO path, because eventually the IO path being utilized by the path frame has different modes of operation. So eventually you can uh, configure it as an input or an output or input output. Uh, eventually we have other modes of operation, but uh, they are not. Uh, uh, they are not utilized at the moment, but at least for now you can, uh, the configuration basically has to do with either setting the direction, whether it's in, out, or uh, bi-directional in, out. Uh, you, can, you can also, uh, uh, you can also uh, do the configuration through the housekeeping SPI, uh, 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 as well as basically uh, through something called the integration time configuration, where uh, basically uh, while you are doing your design, you can provide uh, some uh, file which basically can be used during the tip out process uh, to uh, basically to generate uh, like fixed configuration for your design uh, uh, IO pads uh, and eventually you don't need to run software or to use the housekeeping to do that this is basically will be implemented uh, and will be part of the carver chip design based on your configuration okay. Uh, another uh, another thing, basically, or uh, uh, other than the the thirty eight uh, uh, IO pads that you can utilize uh, by your design, uh, uh, we have uh, basically access to some services provided by the management SOC. One of them eventually is that the management SOC uh, uh, has basically is built around the wishbone bus. Uh, so eventually it looks like this, which one will have CPU with fixed risk. Uh, we have peripherals, acute uh, SPI timer. We have the memories. Eventually this bus is exposed to the user's area and eventually uh, through basically a master uh, port and, and eventually you can use uh, uh, this port eventually to attach your, uh, uh, your slave devices that eventually can be, uh, can be accessed through basically firmware running on the CPU uh, uh, here in the management SOC. And eventually, uh, 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 oh, basically uh, these slaves, the, the use basically a, a certain page, basically with this app for this address. And eventually every time that you basically issue a, a, a memory read or memory write basically to, uh, basically to any address basically within this range based on how your uh, wishbone slaves basically are designed, eventually you will be able basically through uh, firmware running here to access uh, these uh, these slaves uh, for sure uh, basically because uh, you can do something uh, eventually uh, uh, bad in, in your design which basically might break the chip so eventually you need to protect the management of cc because the management of c is essential for the uh, for the carved chip so basically we have the management protect which basically does the basically some sort of isolation between both of them so because uh, eventually the, the the bus is shared between uh, the user's project, uh, which is the use in the user's area and the management of C, so eventually it's protected using the management project. Another thing uh, 
uh, basically that the management of C provides to the user area eventually is clocking and resetting. And uh, eventually this is what you uh, uh, get. So in the management area, eventually we have a, a frequency multiplier that gets uh, eventually the clock from uh, uh, external source, basically through the clock pen. Also, there is a, a free running uh, 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 oscillator on chip, which eventually can be used as well. And uh, you will have basically two, uh, two uh, uh, divisors which you can set. And this basically will uh, will uh, uh, will set basically uh, uh, or multiply, can be used to multiply the frequencies. And uh, eventually these two multiplexers e either can select either the external clock or the multiplied clock, external clock using basically using the, the first uh, multiplier. And the second one basically does the same, except that uh, the second channel basically is 90 degrees basically uh, shifted uh, in the phase. So basically it's the phase, there's phase shift of 90 degrees. And eventually the, the basically uh, uh, what you want to select here eventually is can, can be controlled by the housekeeping SPI, which basically connected to some external pens on the carbon chip, uh, which eventually can talk to it using uh, something like the FCDI chip on the evaluation board that you get. Uh, so uh, uh, eventually the user's project area gets two clocks, uh, the wishbone clock. Uh, which eventually is the same clock used by the management SOC uh, uh, here, uh, uh, which eventually is uh, eventually uh, comes from this multiplexer. Uh, uh, and also there is something else called the user clock, which eventually it's uh, 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 basically it's another another clock coming basically from the second channel, and, and and again it could be basically coming directly from the third clock or after, basically after multiplying it using. Uh, uh, basically, by setting this device. Uh, for the resetting, uh, eventually we have external reset pen, uh, and we have on chip basically uh, uh, power on reset hardware. Uh, so uh, uh, eventually, the out from that uh, basically is exposed to the user's uh, uh, design basically through the wishbone reset signal. Uh, what else we have? We have the 128 read write logic probes, and eventually uh, these eventually can be used to uh, to observe uh, and control signals in the user project. Also, they are uh, protected using the ma the management protect, uh, 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 and eventually uh, each one of these probes eventually is programmable. It can be used to read so that I can observe something, some internal signal inside the user's uh, project. Uh, or uh, basically as an output so, so to write so that I can manipulate or control signal inside the user project. And uh, like shortly, uh, when I discuss the example uh, uh, design, eventually uh, I'm gonna show basically like, like an example use case for that. So uh, how can I, how can I, uh, I basically, uh, how can you use carbon chip to do design? Eventually before uh, basically trying anything uh, that I'm gonna basically, I'm gonna go over shortly, eventually you need first to get yourself familiar with like few things. One of them is the Sky 130 PDK. And eventually uh, uh, at the end of uh, this presentation deck we have, which will be shared with you, we have basically some links to resources, basically, uh, including basically, uh, basically uh, resources, basically to learn more about the, the Sky 130 PDK, what the capabilities of this uh, process uh, uh, for this PDK, what uh, basically what uh, what are the available standards of, uh, libraries, and etc. Uh, etc. Et so eventually, you need uh, to be familiar because eventually these are uh, the building blocks of your basically the PDK provides the building blocks of your uh, of your design. Also, uh, uh, if you are not uh, basically uh, using a commercial uh, EDA uh, toolchain uh, and flows, eventually you can, uh, uh, you're, you're going to use Open Lane, which is uh, our, uh, our, uh, our own open source uh, flow, which basically uh, uses open source EDA tools. And in that case, you, you need to learn about the Open Lane flow. And uh, we have uh, like, uh, Earlier webinars that we did for open lane, and maybe we can repeat that uh, uh, later. And in, in basically, in, in the series of uh, uh, webinars, uh, 
uh, but already we have lots of resources and uh, eventually we have like huge uh, community of open lane users who uh, can help as well and eventually to read more about the carbon uh, chip uh, I, I i just give you basically uh, like some uh, uh, introduction but eventually you need to go and, and, and dig more look at the at source code read the documentation and eventually as we go i'm going to basically share more uh, more information uh the 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 next thing eventually before you start you need to basically to get your design rtl ready uh, so uh typically when we do digital design we start with rtl so eventually you need to have your rtl ready uh, in the sense that it's fully developed and it's uh, it's verified so you have basically test benches that's uh, that verifies the functionality of your design uh and eventually these suspensions eventually they have high coverage so eventually they exercise uh, most of the functions because eventually uh, 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 like many designers they don't pay uh, like lots of attention to uh, verification and eventually uh, 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 if you don't do uh, a good verification uh, uh, which starts with verifying your design uh, through simulation uh, eventually, you will end up basically with uh, a bad, uh, bad implementation. Uh, so verification here is like in, uh, testing in software, but uh, in software you are fortunate because if you have an, an issue, eventually just a matter of uh, uh, defining a few lines of code, hit compile, now you have the implementation, which is the executable code. But here, when we do ASIC, uh, eventually it's a different story because eventually uh, the push the basically push button that uh, uh, that uh, process that you do in software or even in FPGA uh, development basically doesn't uh, here in ASIC eventually uh, might require uh, uh, like several months okay it's not just basically like less than a second to, to basically to push a button and case of a BGA or software here basically it's a very long time so basically we need to make sure that uh, the design is uh, uh, is well verified and uh, verifying the design that goes into the chip even before integrating it into, into the carver chip eventually is something essential so your design basically has to be ready and verified so your starting point eventually is uh, uh, is empty users project trapper and uh, the empty this empty uh, user wrapper eventually defines the area in the curvature chip where your design goes so it's uh, uh, this basically users project wrapper defines uh, 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 what's the footprint the physical footprint uh, so it basically defines uh, a rectangle that includes basically uh, the area where your design your physical uh, basically design after physically physically implementing it uh, basically will be placed uh, uh, also, it defines uh, what are basically the uh, 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 the interfaces. So, what are the pens that eventually will connect uh, your design, which is hosted here by this users area, uh, 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 eventually to the rest of the chip. So, these basically pens are fixed in specific locations because eventually, like this part. Uh, uh, basically, is is not the whole chip. Eventually, it's just part of the the, the coverage chip, and it's connected to other things. And these other things are already routed and connected. So eventually, we you need to design given these as constraints. So the area is a constraint for you. The pen location is a constraint for you. Uh, also, provide you with basically a, 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 a power distribution network, and this power distribution network for four power supplies, uh, two of them, uh, 1.8, not 1.3, it's 1.8 uh, volt. Actually, this is a typo, I have to fix it. And the other one is 3.3, and these are basically uh, uh, VCC D1, VCC2, and VD, uh, 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 VDA1 uh, uh, and 2. And eventually, if we try to uh, uh, basically, like here, uh, if we look at this, basically this is actual the the actual layout of uh, the actual layout of uh, 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 the the users area or the users project wrapper. Uh, uh, and really, what we can see here, we can just see basically the uh, power, basically the power straps that uh, uh, and power rings that eventually uh, make the power distribution network. So if we take, for example, uh, uh, this 
uh, corner. I'll try basically to uh, uh, zoom here. Eventually, you can see basically uh, this basically part of the rings. Okay, so we have the rings basically for these four power supplies. Uh, eventually, they are like uh, like eight of them uh, because each each supply eventually uh, requires like two rings uh, for for example for VCC and uh, and ground. And uh, eventually, we have here also showing the uh, the power straps, the horizontal and vertical power straps. Okay, and eventually. Uh, 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 these power shafts eventually and rings eventually like constructed on uh, metal layers four and five. Uh, so eventually your design uh, eventually will will basically will be beneath that, and eventually everything with basically inside the rings eventually is basically is given to you, uh, uh, and you can basically utilize for your physical for the physical implementation of your design. Okay, so to start, eventually you need to have uh, 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 Docker uh, 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 installed, and you need eventually uh, to uh, uh, to use several uh, repos, and this includes the Caravel user projects, uh, Caravel Lite, Caravel Management SOC Litex, uh, and uh, uh, as well as the Open Lane, uh, and finally the Open BDKs, and eventually. You don't really need to clone these to start uh, because eventually we like we make we made this like easy for you basically through some make file. The only thing that you need to do is just to clone the uh, Caravel user project and eventually uh, run some uh, uh, make targets. Eventually, that will uh, basically will install the the like the rest for you and basically prepare your environment basically for uh, for the uh, for the implementation. So uh, here, basically, we uh, 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 like here. This is just like a reference uh, uh, or recommended workflow, uh, basically, uh, like to to do this. And here, eventually, uh, the idea here, basically, we uh, like you create uh, like an empty uh, an empty GitHub repo for your project, and then eventually uh, 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 you clone locally uh, uh, the uh, the Carvel user project. Okay, so first you create uh, uh, your public uh, GitHub repo, and eventually here I'm calling it my chip. So this is eventually this is this is the one. So this is a remote. Uh, if this is your local machine, so this is like a, a remote repo, my chip uh, on GitHub uh, servers, and uh, and eventually uh, locally, eventually you're gonna create some folder, and then you can clone the Caravel user project into that folder. And then after that, eventually uh, uh, you change basically. Uh, 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 so this is basically the the Carvel user project. You change Carvel user project from being the origin to be upstream, as you can see using the uh, get remote rename. And then uh, uh, after doing this, eventually you uh, 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 you use uh, the uh, my chip eventually as the uh, the origin for your local uh, uh, repo. And uh, eventually, uh, uh, after that, eventually, maybe you can create some uh, uh, some uh, branch. For example, if you are doing this basically for MPW uh, 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 five, eventually you can create a branch with that name, and then uh, you push basically uh, uh, to that branch. And eventually, this basically this is something that uh, eventually uh, we recommend. You don't need to follow, like basically, like to follow this basically recommendation. You can use your own workflow. But we found basically this is basically an an, an uh, basically like uh, 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 like an uh, easy way eventually like to uh, like to manage things. Uh, so once you did this. And you have basically uh, 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 your basically your uh, your local repo. Uh, you can just go there, and then basically you can run make and install, which eventually will install a Carvel into the current uh, uh, repo, and then make and install uh, MCW, uh, MCW, which eventually install the management core. And uh, next step eventually is to install Open Lane if if you want to use Open Lane. Uh, as basically uh, phys uh, uh, a digital physical implementation flow. So uh, you can basically, you can, you, before doing it, you can use the, the make target open lane. But before doing that, you need to define some environmental variable, which is open lane underscore root. Uh, 
so uh, for example, if you want to, uh, if you want basically to have uh, open lane installed inside uh, uh, this repo under the open lane uh, 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 subfolder, eventually uh, uh, you can do something like this, and then you run the target make open lane, and this eventually installs open lane. For uh, you can do the same for the Sky One Thirty PDK. You need to set the PDK root. You can do the same, maybe under uh, basically PDK subfolder, and then uh, make PDK, and this eventually will install the PDK. Eventually, uh, 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 you have to do this. You cannot just basically rely on uh, basically some older installations for the PDK or for. Uh, open lane because eventually like in, with every shuttle we have uh, uh, certain uh, commit ids eventually that uh, should be used uh, and this basically uh, eventually includes basically incremental uh, enhancements and uh, and uh, uh, and basically uh, changes that uh, so that if you use uh, other version of open lane or the pdk eventually you might not end with the successful tape outs so eventually you have to do this Okay, so you set up the environment, you, you did your design, you verified it, uh, you set up your basically uh, uh, design environment. So what are the next steps? So eventually what comes uh, next eventually can be, uh, can be divided into like five steps. Uh, the first one is to integrate your design into the Carvel user wrapper, HDL. So you have the, your HDL verified RTL, you want to integrate that into the uh, uh, user's wrapper. Uh, uh, next step eventually is to do verification. So to verify that uh, you're uh, basically uh, the integration of your uh, your uh, your design is basically with the uh, with Carvel eventually is good, so that you can, uh, for, for example, you can run uh, some firmware eventually on the management SOC in simulation, and you can basically to maybe to. Uh, uh, to communicate with the your design uh, that has maybe some uh, wishbone slaves uh, and, and you can verify that or maybe you can uh, uh, you can write basically some uh, uh, basically can uh, simulate it, it, this case where basically you can have uh, some uh, uh, code that basically firmware that runs on the management SOC to uh, for example to uh, observe and control some internal signals in your design so uh, eventually, this verification verifies that the integration is done cor correctly, and its function is working. So that uh, 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 when you have the basically the chip uh, fabricated, eventually, uh, basically things will, will work. Because if you don't do that, you can guarantee that uh, uh, eventually it will work basically after fabrication. So you have to do it anyways. And again, verification, verification, verification. You need to spend lots of time like doing these verifications. Once uh, basically uh, we are confident that uh, basically uh, and you did basically enough uh, test benching uh, to verify the, uh, the, uh, the your design integration with Carvel, uh, eventually you need to start basically to physically implement uh, uh, your, your design macros uh, and uh, integrate them physically into the uh, user's wrapper that I showed you basically it's, uh, uh, that it's floor plan uh, a few slides ago. Uh, once you do this, you are almost there. So uh, 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 before you submit uh, your basically your uh, your final uh, uh, Carvel chip with your design integrated, eventually you need to make sure that uh, basically uh, that uh, everything went okay in in, in the design. Uh, so for this, we have uh, some sort of uh, checklist that you need to go over, and also a utility called pre-check. Uh, that eventually can run against your repo and basically to make sure that uh, basically uh, nothing went wrong. So it does some, uh, uh, basically some uh, sanity checks to make sure that basically uh, like you didn't do anything that breaks your design and, and basically makes it basically uh, 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 non-functional or basically makes it basically uh, uh, non-manufacturable. Finally, if everything is okay, then you submit the uh, your design uh, to the eFab servers, basically to go into either one of the uh, basically two shuttle programs. So, uh, so let's start first with the first step: uh, integrating your design. 
So eventually, uh, if you look at the, uh, uh, the source tree uh, of the uh, Caravel user projects, which is basically the repo that you have to clone and then to uh, eventually to uh, 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 this repo basically will host like all of your uh, of your designs. If you go to Velop Art, basically uh, Velop RTL, you will notice basically there's basically a file called the user project example and user project wrapper. So the user project wrapper. I'm, I'm not I'm basically I'm not gonna uh, uh, like refer to the first two now at least for now but the 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 the, the third one eventually this is uh, like uh, a Verilog module that represents uh, the user's wrap and actually this is the Verilog module that should host your design so when you do integration eventually your your design uh, eventually should be ins instantiated inside the user project wrapper uh, dot, uh, basically uh, module. Uh, here in this folder, eventually you provide an example, user project example called user project example. So the user project example eventually, as you can see, is, is instantiated inside uh, that user project wrapper. So eventually as a starting point, uh, uh, what you can do, uh, you, can, uh, you can eventually uh, uh, sub so basically like what you want to do uh, you can just move your files design files here and place them under uh, rtl uh, you can organize them the way you want maybe you can sub uh, basically like sub module uh, uh, other uh, basically other repos that contains your rtl files basically here but anyway you need basically somehow to bring your rtl files and put them he uh, here okay so eventually here as an example we give you basically an example which called the user project example which eventually if you examine it will uh, will give you basically clues on how things can be done okay uh, and so that if you are basically uh, like uh, like very like uh, rtl designer eventually it will be an easy task for you just by looking uh, uh, on the user's project i'm going to explain the user project uh, example uh, shortly so eventually you need to replace this by your design so you you like you, Again, you just basically, after basically like studying this file, understanding how this is done, basically can, the integration can be done. Eventually you can just delete it, replace it by your own files, either by bringing them here or submoduling this uh, submodule uh, another repo here. If you look at the user's project wrapper, eventually it's an empty Velop uh, uh, module. Uh, and here I'm showing just the header. And the header eventually contains uh, all basically all the interfaces uh, to the to the uh, user's project wrapper, and these interfaces eventually they are connected to uh, everything else in the Carvel chip. And eventually, these are the things that your applic your uh, your design uh, can uh, basically can use. So here, eventually, I'm not showing the whole uh, the whole uh, 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 mo module. Uh, uh, module header but uh, basically uh, at least i'm showing basically things that uh, you should be using if you're doing digital design so if you look at the ports we have basically ports related to the uh, wishbone uh, master uh, uh, interface okay so all of these are wishbone signals so if if your design involves some wishbone slave that you want to connect to the management soc wishbone eventually you should be using uh, these signals but if you don't want to uh, uh, do that, uh, there are like two important signals that you should be using. Uh, you might want to use uh, eventually one of them basically is the WB clock, uh, 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 the wishbone clock, which eventually is uh, the same as the uh, uh, manage management SOC uh, clock. So if uh, eventually if you are using the wishbone bus, you need to use this. Uh, uh, otherwise, if you want, basically, don't use the which one bus, but you're use, you, you basically you, you want your design to have or to use the same clock as the as the uh, 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 as the management SOC. Eventually, you can use this clock. This is the reset signal. Uh, so, if you want your system to be uh, designed to be reset uh, at the same time as the management SOC or the rest of the carburetor chip, eventually uh, you can do you can do this. You can use this. Uh, uh, some designers of us, they basically opted for creating their own power and reset or to provide the reset signal from outside. Uh, well, again, if you, are, you know what you are doing, uh, go ahead and do that. 
Otherwise, basically, you should use this recess signal. There is another uh, uh, use, basically, another block, of which is the second block that I mentioned before, uh, uh, which which comes from the second clock multiplexer. Uh, so actually, it's provided also as an input, which you can use as well. Uh, these are basically the logic analyzer uh, uh, interfaces. So eventually, uh, a logic analyzer of data n for the data coming. Uh, Basically, if you want to uh, use the, 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 the basically uh, probes basically to observe something in your design, uh, uh, LA data out to control, and eventually you can set the direction eventually by uh, by 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 this uh, eventually which basically the logic analyzer output enable. So eventually, it's as I showed you earlier. Eventually, uh, the output enable controls controls this tri-state buffer. So eventually, if you want to, uh, if you want basically to, uh, to write data that goes to the user project, eventually you need to enable this tri-state buffer. Otherwise, eventually disable it so that you read the data coming from the user project, which means if you want to write, then enable it. If you want to read, uh, you just disable it, OK? Uh, and then we have these basically uh, uh, the uh, uh, the I/O pads basically uh, interfaces. So for every I/O pad, the theory eight, eventually we have uh, in, out, and out enabled. Which eventually, uh, if it's if it's configured to be in, eventually you should be using this only. If configured to be out, you should be using this only. If it's basically bidirectional, then you need to use the three of them. Where basically. In for input, out for output, and then output enable eventually for setting the direction. Uh, we have also three uh, uh, user IQ uh, lines so that you can uh, you can use the three uh, IQ lines to send basically IQ signals to so interrupt uh, the management SOC. So uh, eventually, if you want to do that. Uh, maybe because uh, you have implemented uh, three uh, wishbone slaves and each one of them eventually is tied to can be tied to one of these IRQ lines so that you can uh, interrupt the uh, the management SOC. Or you can use them basically for uh, like for, for something else like it depends on what you want to do. Okay, so the the provided uh, uh, sample user project eventually is very a very simple uh, project, but it's basically it's uh, uh, it shows basically and demonstrates uh, how can you uh, basically uh, uh, develop a design that can makes uh, ma that, ca that can make use of uh, the available uh, uh, basically uh, services provided the ma management area. So this design eventually is very simple. It's nothing but uh, a thirty-two bit counter. Uh, where basically the count can be observed on the IO pads, uh, which means in order to use this design, we need to configure the IO pads to be output uh, uh, so that we can uh, basically we can observe uh, the uh, the count on the IO pads. These are basically uh, the IO pads of the uh, from the path frame. So basically we're going to use 32 out of the 38 to do that. Uh, 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 and then we have uh, this eventually counter is connected to the wishbone. So it's like uh, acts as a wish, wishbone slave. And uh, eventually uh, what we can do with the, basically with the wishbone is to read or write the count, the, this count register. So eventually the uh, current count can be read or can be uh, set eventually through uh, uh, basically some uh, instruction, some code running on the management SOC to access this uh, counter basically as a slave. And then finally, uh, we have uh, logic analyzer probes that eventually can be used to uh, 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 eventually to, to load initial value uh, to the, uh, uh, basically to the counter as well as uh, eventually provide the clock need basically uh, for counting. So again, so uh, if I, uh, the clock eventually uh, 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 can, can come eventually uh, from the uh, logic analyzer so that I can basically, uh, in software, I can just toggle one of the uh, 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 logic analyzer probes, which is configured basically to be an output so that can control the clock signal. And eventually I can, I, uh, uh, in this case, I, uh, in this way I can generate clock for, uh, for, the, uh, for this counter.
Okay. Uh, eventually, uh, I can also clock the counter using uh, basically this, the, uh, 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 the the wishbone uh, clock, and uh, uh, and there is a multiplexer which eventually can select between basically these two. So uh, if I want basically to use the wishbone to access the counter in, in for read and write, eventually. I select the clock for uh, the wishbone. Eventually, if I want to use the logic analyzer to do the same thing, eventually I can, using again the logic analyzer probes, I can basically I can select this basically the clock which is toggled in software basically and uh, on using one of the logic analyzer probes. Uh, so uh, the way we, we did this design, actually, if you look at uh, go back here and look at this file, eventually it's very simple. It's very simple design. Uh, yet it's basically it demonstrates uh, how can use these interfaces. If you uh, 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 look at this design, eventually we did it such that it's one module instantiated inside the user's wrapper, which is exactly like this. So we have the user project wrapper, and then we have uh, in one module that implements uh, our counter design and it's instantiated inside the user's uh, uh, wrapper. Okay. And typically, we refer to this basically as option one. We have other options. Uh, eventually, if your design is more complex uh, than basically than than basically than this, which should be the case, uh, eventually your design might basically uh, constructed out of several uh, modules. Okay, and eventually these modules uh, uh, basically will be instantiated inside the user wrapper, and this is what we refer to as option two. And, and then we have basically a third option where basically uh, your, you, the user's wrapper hosts your design. So you don't, you don't have any hierarchy. Everything is flattened inside the user's uh, project wrapper. Uh, you can do this as well. And eventually in RTL, uh, in RTL, uh, you can still have the hierarchy, but when you synthesize and you physically implement your design, eventually you can flatten, you can, you can flatten your design. So uh, when you do, you basically create the net list, uh, you can flatten your netlist, and then your design is, is flattened. And then when you do physical implementation, eventually it will be just basically uh, your design cells eventually exist inside uh, uh, the, the, the user's project wrapper. Eventually, uh, the option, again, uh, the, the example, we're using option uh, one. Uh, you can use any of these three options, or maybe you can come up with your own option. Uh, ha, uh, however, the option that you select uh, determines the way you should be hardening your design. So in the uh, in the in this user's example, because we're using option two, eventually uh, uh, we need to follow basically certain uh, certain way for hardening uh, the uh, the user's project and integrating it into the uh, user's project wrapper, and eventually all the provided make files and configuration eventually are uh, are basically are uh, designed. Uh, as such. Okay, once we do this integration, okay, so your eventually your uh, your uh, your design is uh, instantiated inside the user wrapper, connected to the ports. Whether you have hierarchy or uh, basically you opted to flat your, you flatten your design, you need basically to, to perform functional verification to make sure that. Uh, your design is still functioning and the uh, features that require services from the uh, Carville management as we see eventually uh, are functional. And uh, for this, eventually uh, uh, we provide some uh, test, uh, basically test benches with some test cases. And these test cases eventually they involve uh, the execution of uh, some uh, C programs for each one of the test cases. Uh, on basically on the management SOC, basically to perform a specific or to or verify a specific thing, for example, to, to verify, for example, that uh, the management SOC can control and, uh, and observe signals inside, the, for example, your design uh, through the uh, basically using the uh, uh, logic analyzer. Or if your design has uh, slave, uh, wishbone slaves, eventually you can talk to these wishbone slaves. Uh, eventually, this verification required that you have uh, uh, basically verification environment that uh, involves uh, uh, the uh, 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 RISC V uh, uh, tool chain, development tool chain, the GCC, uh, 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 as well as simulators and other 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 utilities. Uh, 
uh, eventually we created like uh, a, a Docker image for that and uh, provide an instruction on how basically to install things and run the simulation. And uh, eventually you can uh, you can just basically follow this link basically to, to figure out or learn about uh, these, uh, how this can be done. And eventually uh, in, in upcoming webinars, eventually you are gonna get in touch more with this and uh, 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 and eventually uh, I, I can go deep into basically into this topic. Uh, so this eventually will be covered uh, in more details later so that you can attend if you are interested to learn more. Eventually when we do uh, after integration, when we do verification, uh, like uh, we need to do basically several times uh, uh, and basically at different uh, levels during uh, the design. So once you do integration, you still have uh, the RTL, or maybe you synthesize your design into bit level netlist and you flattened it so you have it inside the user wrapper. So, anyways, at this once you have the integration, then you need to run uh, uh, basically uh, 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 verification, uh, and and you can utilize the uh, provided infrastructure for that. And uh, and typically, this is basically typically is RTL verification unless you already synthesized your design somehow and basically flattened it and you and you have it basically inside the user wrapper. Uh, eventually this has to be done before hardening and you should not start the hardening process unless uh, you have basically this is sorted out. Okay, uh, because eventually it makes no sense to do hardening uh, if basically you don't have a basically a verified design. For sure you can do this just basically to make sure that uh, 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 Everything is okay, so that when you finish the uh, the RTL verification after after integration, uh, the hardening process eventually already as a pipeline is already cleaned up, so that uh, you accelerate things. But uh, really, you cannot uh, start like real hardening unless you have verified uh, RTL. Uh, eventually, we need to do an, a, another another functional verification uh, as we do hardening, which eventually the third step. So that every time we generate a get level netlist, eventually we need to uh, verify that we didn't uh, uh, basically uh, uh, we didn't break uh, things. Uh, so we do functional verifications on the get level netlist uh, because eventually uh, you can end up, for example, when you, after synthesis and you get the get level netlist, you might end up with a netlist that is not equivalent to your RTL because. Uh, 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 RTL uh, eventually uh, uh, coding, uh, 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 bad RTL coding. Uh, eventually they are in, in value, for example, they are very well-known mistakes that designers do over and over and over. And these mistakes eventually uh, will result in basically in uh, netless, which is different than the intention, uh, what basically the designer basically intended. Uh, uh, and and ev uh, so eventually you need to avoid this. Uh, uh, like in ePubs, we do have like like recommend like like the do document that outlines basically the recommended uh, 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 basically uh, RTL styles that you should be using while basically doing RTL coding, and also there are uh, basically very famous textbooks that you can refer to as well, basically that covers this uh, this area. Uh, Another reason that you could be doing uh, basically for uh, uh, for art, uh, for Git level uh, netless verification is that uh, a tool is a piece of software and it could contain a bug which basically wasn't exposed before, but now is exposed by your design, and this bug might end up with uh, uh, might end up with uh, uh, a bad uh, uh, netless. Uh, so eventually. He, you do a netlist, a get level netlist uh, verification, functional verification, to basically to make sure that, in addition to the uh, the bad style, basically RTL coding style that you might use and break your code, also to basically make sure that the basically the tool, uh, that for example, the synthesis tool basically did the right job. Okay, uh, as we do, uh, eventually uh, go through the hardening process. Uh, for example, using open lane, uh, uh, more Git level netlist will be generated, uh, uh, especially when you do, uh, uh, for example, when you do optimizations, uh, design optimizations using uh, uh, physical information. Uh, 
and eventually uh, 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 these optimizations means your get level net list is modified so eventually you need to verify that functionally that the modified get level, get, get level net list eventually is equivalent to uh, to the original uh, rtl that you verified already uh, uh, so that basically all of your test cases eventually if they pass eventually uh, and if your test cases or verification suite eventually has very high coverage so eventually that basically raises the confidence that eventually things are going in the right direction uh, Another, another thing that we do at the end, when basically we have the final layouts uh, that basically includes uh, uh, everything, all the physical aspects, eventually we can perform uh, some uh, basically a process called extraction, which is done automatically by, for example, open lane or any other uh, uh, ASIC uh, uh, flows, uh, commercial ASIC flows. And this basically generates uh, what we refer to as SDF, which is standard delay format, which eventually can be used to annotate uh, the gate level netlist with timing information. And eventually you can perform uh, now a functional uh, uh, verification, including timing, because when you do RTL verification or when you do gate level netlist really verification through simulation, you don't really, in, in the RTL, there is no, the notion of timing is not there unless you add some delays in your test bench. But other than that, the, the your RTL code doesn't have any delays. Okay, so it, it simulates with zero delays. In get level netlist, uh, the the library cell models eventually has uh, basically uh, a unit delay which you can set, but it uh, basically treats all the cells the same, which eventually is not the reality. So uh, uh, timing eventually is not there uh, once. You have the actual delays because you have the actual uh, uh, final layouts, uh, which basically, and you're able to extract this, these delays because you know what are basically the parasitics of the interconnect, uh, etc. Eventually, these delays uh, 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 can be can be used basically to perform timing uh, 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 verification. So you do functional verification with timing information. And uh, eventually, this also uh, will be covered later. However, if you just follow this link, uh, basically, we have basically instructions on how this uh, can be done. OK, so the third step, so after integrating your design, verifying that your design is uh, basically is, uh, uh, is OK and ready to go, we basically can start the hardening process. And for hardening process, typically, we use open lane uh, uh, flow, uh, which relies on open source EDA. If you have access to commercial EDA tools, you can you, you can do the same. So you harden your design, and based on the option that you selected for uh, your design in, uh, integration into the user trapper, eventually you can end up with basically one of the three options. So option one, you have basically this is the user wrapper, and then you have a single ma uh, uh, macro. Okay, so your single module, for example, like in the case of the uh, user's project example, the thing, basically the single module will be end up into as a single macro that might include other macros, like in this case, and uh, eventually this macro eventually will be connected, like, as you can see, to the inputs and the, uh, basically to the, uh, uh, to the interfaces of the uh, user's wrapper. So the, the, the ports of the user wrapper eventually connected to the ports of this macro and these wires that you can see them here eventually implements this connection. Or option two, uh, basically you have multiple modules. So you end up with multiple macros. As you can see here, we have one, two, three, four, five, six macros, as you can see inside the, uh, inside the uh, 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 user's wrapper. Okay, so each one of them eventually is uh, its own Velog module or you just basically flatten everything and what you have inside the user's wrapper eventually just sells, uh, 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 which eventually will be placed and routed using, uh, using open lane or any other uh, flow. Okay, so these are basically the uh, uh, different basically uh, physical layouts that you would get based on the option that you select when you, when you did the integration. So uh, to harden your design, uh, again, use uh, if you want to use open lane, uh, we'll provide basically like uh, 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 reference configurations for option for, for the first option. Uh, 
uh, these files are configured are, are there so you can just uh, use them customize them for your own needs you can modify them uh, basically support other options uh, maybe in near future will be uh, will be releasing uh, more examples basically to show how can you uh, basically how can you implement the other two options option two and option three as well uh, and by the way we already have these uh, uh, other two options, option two and option three, are already implemented by designs when to end to open MBW one, two, three, and four. So you can just visit uh, the repos of these designs. And actually, this is the power of open source. And eventually, like look at the configurations and how fellow designers basically uh, implemented their designs using the other options other than option number one. Okay, so uh, 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 if basically using uh, the, the the configurations of the make file uh, provided by the users uh, uh, users project example, uh, eventually uh, all you need to do uh, eventually is to run make user project example, and this eventually would uh, harden uh, the uh, the user project example using open lane, and then uh, make user uh, project wrapper, and eventually this will basically will harden the user wrapper, which means it will create an instance of the uh, the user project example macro inside the user wrapper and performs all the necessary routing uh, to basically to Im to uh, to implement the design your design inside the user's uh, project wrapper, and again. Uh, 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 this make files depends on the configurations uh, that basically you need to uh, uh, to set based on uh, your uh, your design. W once you are done with the uh, with the hardening, and again uh, during hardening, as I mentioned, you need to do perform uh, like verifications, uh, like get level nest uh, net list function verifications, and then finally timing verification. So if if you are done with all of these three steps. Eventually comes the uh, the step of checking your design, which is basically a essential step before just before submitting your design to be considered for uh, 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 any of the two shuttle programs. Uh, so to make things easier, uh, at Ethabis, uh, we created a utility called PreCheck, which eventually you can run locally on your machine. Also, it's available on uh, eFabless platform, uh, uh, and I'm going to show you how basically you can use it. And eventually, when uh, before submitting your project, anyways, you need to run the pre-check on the eFabless platform. Uh, so eventually, in order to uh, 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 reduce the number of iterations, uh, doing that, like uh, eventually, like creating a, a job and basically to run the pre-check on eFabless uh, uh, platform, eventually you can run the pre-check locally, uh, uh, basically fix all the issues reported the pre-check, and eventually, uh, uh, once uh, basically uh, you are confident that basically you implemented all uh, 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 all basically uh, 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 all the items in the checklist and the pre-check eventually doesn't report any issue now you can uh, submit it basically to uh, to the uh, to uh, create a job to run the pre-check on eFabless platform so one of the things that eventually that you need to consider uh, 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 basically uh, in your uh, in your repo before submission uh, which eventually listed by checklist that you can just basically uh, uh, check by visiting uh, uh, this link. Uh, uh, eventually, things like uh, that you haven't changed the wrapper footprint because eventually, if you do this, it cannot be integrated with the Kerbal chip. Uh, another another important thing that you need to have documentation, many of documentation, okay, uh, th basically through the uh, readme.md file. Uh, but we, because this is an open, basically, if you are submitting to open MBW, uh, your design is open source. So we encourage all designers eventually to submit, uh, basically, like uh, good documentation, because eventually this will help others eventually to make good use of your work in the future. Uh, also, uh, 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 you should be using one of the supported open source licenses such as Apache 2, MIT, BSD. And actually, if you basically, if you follow this link, you will basically you'll find a list of all supported open source licenses because there are some open source licenses eventually that are not supported uh, 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 for the Open MBW uh, uh, shuttle program. Uh, so make sure that basically you are using one of the supported ones. Uh, also, uh, 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 the pre-check will make sure that your design is physically clean. And eventually, uh, 
Uh, this is not part of pre-check, but uh, uh, we provide basically some make targets for it. Eventually, you need to make sure that uh, your, uh, your, your, uh, your, your, the whole carbon chip after physically in, uh, implement basically uh, uh, your, your, sorry, your user's wrapper after physically implementing it eventually is timing clean. And we have a target for this. And eventually, uh, how this is done and the details of that eventually will be covered also in uh, basically upcoming webinars. So to check uh, your design, eventually you can just call, basically run the, uh, the pre-check the targets. So make pre-check and eventually this would install all necessary uh, uh, like uh, uh, tools. Eventually all these tools eventually come in like as a, uh, basically in uh, uh, Docker, uh, basically Docker image. So Docker image will be pulled and eventually uh, after that, you just set uh, uh, the caravel underscore root uh, variable and uh, you just run the run pre check target, and this eventually runs the pre check. And eventually, uh, if you have any issues, basically the, the report basically will be generated. And if you want to know basically more about what are the checks being uh, basically uh, uh, implemented by the pre check, and uh, eventually you can just uh, consult this link. Now you are ready to submit your finished design. So do this. You just uh, go uh, go basically directly into the eFabulous uh, uh, website, and you log in by basically by hitting the login button here, and this will bring basically the login dialog. Uh, so at, uh, you can basically log in using Google, uh, GitHub, LinkedIn. And then uh, once you do this, uh, eventually uh, you'll basically you can select which uh, shuttle basically you are targeting. So for example, if you are targeting Open uh, MBW5, this is the one you just hit on this button, uh, start, and this would bring basically creates a new project. And for sure, you cannot do this unless you log in. So first you need to log in. Uh, you start basically to fill the project information. So what's the project title? Uh, the visibility if it's open mbw it has to be public and then you give the summary you give the organization organization url you get you get basically the get url and then uh, basically you need to follow certain format you can learn about that uh, by basically by uh, like clicking here give the, the version you can add tags uh, uh, you can select category uh, the process is 130a uh, in the future we'll have more uh, and then you can just basically add description. Okay. Once you create uh, this, eventually you will have now projects listed under your projects, and eventually you can get your projects eventually by uh, basically by expanding this menu and select menu item and selecting uh, uh, my projects. So, for example, if this is the the project that I have just created, all, all you need to do is just basically uh, like click on it. This will bring basically the project page where basically shows you all the, uh, the information that you provided. Uh, you just go to uh, workspace and then workspace eventually you can uh, 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 you can create basically uh, 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 MPW pre-check which actually you run again the pre-check now is not locally but on the uh, eFabless platform because eventually you cannot submit unless it basically pass pre-check on eFabless platform. So you can basically here, uh, you can click on this, and this will bring basically dialogue that asks you basically to give a name to the, to the job, and then you submit the job. Eventually it will run the pre-check, and then if everything is okay, it basically, it will go from, uh, the status goes basically to the succeeded uh, okay, uh, state. And then at this point, eventually the tape out button eventually will be will be uh, uh, undimmed. So you can actually you can click on it before when basically it was just submitted. Eventually you cannot you cannot do any tape out. So the tape out actually is dimmed as you can see. So it has to be submitted and succeeded in order basically to uh, uh, to have this uh, tape out button enabled. So you can eventually you can. Uh, 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 when you hit it, uh, you have a dialogue which basically will uh, will ask you to provide a name for the job and also uh, ask you basically if you have multiple breach checks, which basically uh, which one eventually you want to use uh, use for this uh, tip out submission. And uh, 
and that's it. So when eventually uh, you submit the tip out uh, uh, job, eventually what's happening in the EFAPS platform is that uh, the the uh, the GDS of your uh, of your Im Im design implemented inside the user driver. So the GDS of the user driver eventually will be integrated into the Caravel chip to end up basically with uh, the completed Caravel chip because eventually now this uh, this basically uh, uh, blank area is filled by the uh, by the user driver that inc that includes your project and now the basically the chip basically is ready to go. So uh, here are basically some resources that you can basically and documentation that you can basically you can you can access uh, for all the things that I covered today. And uh, eventually, uh, if you have any questions, you can uh, contact us. If you need to learn more about Chip Ignite program, eventually you can just follow this link. Thank you very much, Jeff. Great. Hey, thank you, Mohammed. That was that was excellent. So. I am. Um, I, I'm going to cover a few questions that were come up, you know, fairly repeatedly. One was um, just the yeah, access to the slides, right? So I did publish them. But I'm going to drop them in Slack right now, uh, or into the chat right now. I'll also post them on the Slack um, community channel as well for anybody who wants to, um, you know, find them there. If you're connected, I would highly recommend you connect to Slack if you haven't already. Uh, there was a there's a kind of reference to that in the slides that uh, Mohammed presented. Um, a few questions around just shuttle dates. So just um, as a quick update, we do have um, you know we did do an update you know to Caravel redesign kind of you know at the end of last year that was um, basically applied uh, to kind of the shuttles MPW two, MPW three, and MPW four. Um, those are all currently at the foundry, um, but because of the you know, so, you know, some dates, the submission dates push because of the update. Uh, I don't have revised updates yet for kind of when those shuttles will deliver, but we will post those to the community as soon as, um, as, as soon as I have those. Um, all right, so if you have questions, we probably have a little bit of time. Uh, please feel free to post them. Um, I think one of the questions around uh, was around analog. I, I think, um, you know, there's a, Folks interested in analog designs or implement analog designs, uh, definitely analog is supported. There is a um, Caravel user project analog um, that you can reference under uh, GitHub under eFabulous organization. Uh, there's also Slack channels for supporting analog, um, which I recommend, uh, and Tim's online as well if you have specific questions. So I mean, he's answering you know, Q and A questions, um, but we will um, planning on. Uh, hosting a, a webinar specifically focused and dedicated to um, analog design. So look for that coming up. Um, let's see how many how frequent are chip ignite projects. So the so the, the so the shuttle schedule right now we have four more um, open MPW shuttles for the Sky 130 coming out this year. Um, one the next one is uh, has a submission date in March as MPW five. Um, beyond that, there will be a one per quarter. So you can expect to see, you know, three more, uh, probably the last one finishing probably around November of um, November, December, you know, of, uh, of this year. Um, we expect those to continue, you know, with, you know, continued success in the program, but that's really will be depended on um, Google. Uh, the the Chip Ignite shuttles also will be running. We have one open now for April and another one for June. Um, we're expecting to continue to be, you know, making more available through through the end of the year, at least one per quarter, um, and maybe more again, depending on um, kind of demand and interest in the in the uh, you know in the program. Uh, recordings, of course, will be made available to everybody. Um, I just published the link for the slides. Um, I will go ahead and make sure those get out to everyone who's registered. Um, sorry, I, I meant to say a link for the recording is made available to everybody. So, um, okay, any other, I guess I'll open it up to maybe the other folks on the panel, any other questions that you think we deserve kind of mention? I know Tim, anything from you or? Uh, there were a few questions about the clocks and the clock rates. Uh, I have uh, recently, uh, looked at the 
onboard clock and characterized it at least on well, I characterized it by measuring on one chip, which is all I had. Uh, but for that one, it was running about 50 megahertz to 100 megahertz. Uh, so for anybody who wants to know what clock is available, that's that's it. The GPIO pads have a upper limit of 50 megahertz, so you won't get a clock on board faster than that. The uh, the clock that is provided on the development boards that we give to you are 10 megahertz. Uh, so you can use that. You could potentially replace that with a higher chip, a uh, higher frequency chip. The processor itself is characterized for 40 megahertz. So you can potentially go as high as that to run the processor without breaking it. Uh, and if you can design something that runs higher than 100 megahertz, then you would have to be responsible for building your own clock multiplier or onboard PLL to, uh, to bounce up the frequency to what you need. I think that covers all the questions I was getting about clock. All right, great. Uh, Mohammed, Kassam, are you anything you notice? Well, I just wanted to, on the analog side, uh, there, there's actually, uh, uh, should be a, a complete change of how um, the experience will be. So there will be, in the, just as you mentioned, in the next webinar, we will have, or, or one of the webinars coming up, we'll have a, a, a view of that. And it will be uh, less hassle in, in terms of uh, installation or just out of the box. Uh, and also would be uh, offered on the platform as we go forward. Okay, great. Well, there, uh, I don't see any of the questions posted. So I want to, uh, again, thank Mohammed Shalan for the presentation. It was really great. Uh, and thanks for everybody for attending today. Uh, please feel free to reach out to us either um, you, you, via email. Probably best option is shuttle at efabulous.com um, or through the Slack community um, site. All right. Well, thank you for everybody. Uh, thank you, everyone, and uh, enjoy the rest of your day. Take care. Bye.